Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Motushi Kobir. I'm the Director of Communication, Learning and Leadership Development at Bragg. Thank you so much for joining us today. I know all of us, we share a common passion about the transformative power of education. Since its inception, Bragg believes that education is a fundamental catalyst for change. To date, nearly 30 million children, over half of them girls, have graduated from Bragg's pre-primary and primary schools. An overwhelming majority of them have gone into the public school system, performing on average better than their mainstream peers. We are extremely honored and proud that three of Bragg schools in Bangladesh have been selected among the global top 100 that T4 is showcasing this week. Before I introduce you to our distinguished panelists today, let's take you to Northeastern Bangladesh. One of the Bragg schools, the Shaude Street Primary School, have been selected in the Global 100. Can we please have the video? Shal is a geographically remote, underserved, and disaster prone area of Bangladesh. This area becomes a very extensive water body in the monsoon and dries up mostly in post monsoon period. Due to geographical challenge, physical communication is hampered. Most of the people are deprived of the development actions of both government and non government organizations. Their life is surrounded by poverty physical disability, cultural backwardness, social exclusion, environmental degradation, gender discrimination, climate vulnerability, and so on. Among them, girls fall as the most disadvantaged group. The reason for girls' trauma is long distance from home to school, extreme poverty, inappropriate arrangements of education. Average literacy in Shanghai is 21.8%. In this context, how can we enroll girls in the school? How can we make schools more accessible to the girls? But the girls' safety is a big question. Saudi Roshri Bragg Primary School has overcome these barriers for girls' education. It started in 2018. The community played a vital role. From the inception of the school, Bragg engage parents and the community for convincing the community leaders and resolve any misconception and sensitive issues regarding girls' education and in schools operation. Together, they plan school start and end time, place of the schoolhouse so that girls can access easily. This school is planned, designed and established in close coordination with the local community. This school connects all the parents actively with a strong follow-up by monthly parents' meeting chaired by the teacher. These parents' meeting are used as a tool to make them understand the value and advantages of girls' education, engage them actively into the schooling system. It plays a role to aware the consequence of child marriage and violence against women and children. If they know the importance of the daughter's education, the most challenges can be minimized. Moreover, parents trust in school management committee as it is from the same community. The positive attitude towards education in the community is clearly seen in the result. Higher enrollment rate of the girls and their overall performance. Look inside the school room. Red carpet on the floor welcomes them with warmth every day. Nice and colorful teaching learning materials are creating a suitable environment for learning. It attracts the children positive attitude to study. 50% of students here are girls. A science corner and a mini library is equipped with the necessary materials and books. Girls have separate toilet facilities. It helps them comfortable during class. Students do gardening in a adjacent garden after the class finishes. The teacher is female. She is cooperative, motherly, 
and most importantly, she is from the same community, a known face to the students. She engages them actively in the study. She sensitizes them about the physical well-being, mental health, makes them understand what is good touch and what is not. Students sit in U shape. They sit in the groups while doing group works. All students are divided into five groups, four girl leaders and one boy leader. They lead to help classmates who are facing difficulties in reading or critical subjects like science, maths. Co-curricular activities are routine work in the school. Especially, girls participate proactively. This is a major reason why they enjoy class so much. Their active participation in leading groups and performing arts help them to grow with leadership. In this way, Shao De Roshri School is waving a path gradually for girls, inshallah, to dream, lead, and live a better life. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm very uh, honored to introduce you to our distinguished panel members today. We have with us Ms. Rashida K. Chaudhary, Executive Director of Campaign for Popular Education campaign. A renowned educationist and social activist, Rashida K. Chaudhary is a leading policy voice in Bangladesh with more than two decades of experience of working within and outside the government. She has been serving since 1999 as the executive director of Campaign for Popular Education, which is a national coalition of more than a thousand NGOs, researchers and educator groups working in the education sector in Bangladesh. Ms. Chaudhuri has also served as an advisor slash minister in 2008 in the non-party interim caretaker government in Bangladesh. The pro-learner, pro-quality reforms that she introduced were later accepted and continued by the elected government. Welcome, Ms. Rashida Kenjotri. We are also extremely delighted to have Mr. Profullo Chandro Bormun with us, Program Head BRAC Education Program. He has been working in BRAC for 33 years. He joined BRAC in 1987, just the second year of the inception of BRAC Education Program. And has extensive experience of operating schools on the ground. I'll first go to Ms. Rashida Kechaudhry. Rashida, a warm welcome to today's session. Thank you. You have spent a lifetime in education advocacy and in uh, making sure that the girls and children in Bangladesh receive quality education. As you have seen in the video, that one of the core component of BRAC education model, especially the Shaudhir Street Primary School, is community engagement, is involving parents and communities into the design and running of the program. In your experience, how important is this? How important is community participation? Uh, thank you for getting me here. Can you see me? It's yes. Getting can you see me? Okay, yes, okay. hear me well. You. I yes, can see you and hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Uh, thanks to BRAC, particularly BRAC Education Program here today for inviting me here. All my life I've been an activist. I have not been a practitioner like what all of you have been doing, right? Profullo is here. Practitioner in the sense working at the ground level. But uh, the way I would like to put it, I've been working with people like Profullo and the communities uh, at the ground level for making a difference or making things happen. That's what I should say. So you have been asking me about the community. The, uh, sorry, I forgot the question. I, the first question was the, which was you know, uh, we, uh, uh, how important is community participation yes, in yes. running a school in the ground level? OK, so then I have to go back to uh, in the early 80s, early 80s. Let me go back to those break days when I was much, much younger like you. And <laughs> that time I went to visit Shala uh, to meet Sar Fazle Hassan Abed. 
I was expecting to meet him there, but he was not there. In any case, I had the opportunity to visit the BRAC functional primary education program, functional education program. And interestingly, you are talking about community. You know what? That time, no school building, nothing. There were some 30 students. Apologies, I think the internet connection uh, is a bit sketchy. Please bear with us. From different communities, rural areas, interactive it was so wonderful. And Apologies for the interruption in the sound a bit. I think it's a rainy day in Dhaka, that's why the quality of sound is not uh, up to the mark. I was going to this kids to come to and they, by engaging the community and the learners themselves in kind of decision making, that made a difference. And now no school, no kids, they don't have to bring in kettles. They have their school institutions there, even black non-formal education programs. It has wonderful facilities. So things have changed, but in between, because of community, deciding what time it should be. I think uh, we are facing Can some. Can you hear me now? Uh, I think uh, we are facing some uh, technical difficulty oh, in I'm terms of uh, getting your voice. Uh, I, I'm requesting our technical team to check the uh, internet connection at uh, Rashidapa's end. In the meantime, let me go to uh, Profullo Chandra Bormon. Well, uh, we'll come back to Rashidapa uh, once the connection is uh, set. Very sorry about that. Uh, Profullo, uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, we have seen how beautifully the schools are designed, colorful, accessible, and taking into consideration the diverse need of the students, especially the girl, girl children. So when you are designing the school environment, what kind of aspects do you take into consideration to make sure that the environment is friendly and effective for the children, especially the girls? Uh, thank you, Appa. Thank you. Uh, it is a uh, very important things like uh, to stay girls in the school. Uh, in that case, uh, the school environment and uh, the learning environment is very important. Uh, uh, if we see uh, the dropout, uh, uh, one of the major cause uh, if the learning environment is not friendly for the children, specifically for the girls. So uh, for that, uh, we uh, try to ensure uh, within the classroom, uh, the environment, uh, the girl child friendly environment so that uh, a girl child can stay in the school. Uh, let us uh, uh, discuss uh, something before. When we started our school, uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, mobilization with the community. Uh, we uh, go to the village, uh, meet with the parents and not only the parents as well as the larger community. 
to to understand them why uh, need girls health education so we build a uh, kind of uh, uh, a report uh, with the with the community with the parents before opening a school and in the at the same time we recruit teacher we recruit teacher not like uh, the formal way we we circulate uh, and then we recruit we also survey our teacher in the village uh, uh, so that uh, the teacher can also from the same community so the teacher are known before uh, starting school with the with the community with the parents and as well as the children so when school is started uh, there is a uh, already uh, building a, a kind of uh, parents uh, teacher relationship uh, so that children also familiar with with their teacher with the schools so that's the beginning then uh, in the school room we uh, try to uh, decorate it uh, so that every child attract in uh, in the classroom uh, the teacher uh, as she knows all the children so she gives individual attention to each children and uh, our school is like there is a u shape and also they sit in the group so teacher have opportunity to reach in each and every child and and teacher not only just uh, uh, give attention in learning purpose uh, she also looks after their well being so in that way there is a pos uh, develop positive relationship with the teacher and children uh, uh, in 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 terms of learning we uh, there is a group learning peer learning so each children attached with their peers and also in a small group so in a way uh, there is they also develop the social uh, uh, kind of development am among among themselves so they feel very easy in the schools like not any kind of fear uh, and they enjoy enjoy the classroom uh, there is a lot varieties of resources varieties of learning materials uh, so that they uh, real objects so that they, they can relate they are learning with those objects so this uh, will very easy to learn for them like uh, teacher always give them opportunity to instruct their ideas through a small group discussion they also explored like project based learning experiment uh, inside the classroom as well as outside the classroom so that's also makes them very attractive uh, in in learning uh, you know in our system we have formative assessment so there is no fear of exam so through this formative assessment teacher uh, assesses uh, in every uh, aspects of the learning as well as their uh, behavior their co curricular activities so teacher can also identify the gaps where need improvement so according to accordingly that teacher plan to minimize those gaps so uh, not a single child like uh, lagging behind in learning uh, if teacher found uh, in that case so there is a kinds of remedial uh, class and also individual attention to a specific that children uh, thank you thank you so much okay, okay, uh, prokul loda okay, how okay, you have beautifully you. described that uh, how brack takes into account the comprehensive development and well being of the child while you are thinking about the environment also the teaching process rashida apologies we missed the story uh, and we'll, i'd like to come to you again because you were talking about the beginning of days when brack started his education program and how the schools came about uh, let's try again rashida would you like to uh, please uh, repeat what you were saying rashid appa can you hear us we'll come back to rashid appa uh, 
apologies again for the technical difficulties. Uh, I think uh, how, what Prokunath has said that the children's well-being and their development is taking into account. So let's hear from a student now. Rashidapa, can you hear us? Hear me. Right. Uh, let's see, Appa. You, you were telling us a story that you met Brack founder Sarfaz yeah, Hassan Abed. Uh, uh, no. Let's try again. Uh, maybe I'm requesting the mm -hmm. IT. IT team, maybe we can turn the videos off. That might have a better reception of sound. If we turn the cameras off. So I'm requesting the technology team. Let's try uh, turning the speakers cameras off. That might have better sound quality. The problem is I can't get in the live. Can you see me? Rashidapa, we can hear you and see you. Oh, okay. You can you can hear me and see me. Okay. Okay. Your question was, what so, the? Uh, so, the, okay. Yeah, you ahead. were. Uh, you were just sharing with us about the beginning days when you when you started with BRAC and your experience of going to the schools with Saur Fazle Hassan Abed. So uh, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't listen to the story properly. I'd like you to share again. Thank you. Yeah, OK. It was in the early 80s. I went to see I was a researcher, young researcher uh, at the time uh, in the early 80s. So I went to see Sir Fazle Hassan Abed. He was not Sir. I heard about this missionary or visionary leader. I see him, but he's in my the newly started program. It was. This in the north part of Bangladesh. Interest, you know, building the sitting. 30 35 kids were sitting under the tree. They, they were allowed to bring in their cattle to the learning premises. I should not be calling it a school. But the other point is, before I was watching kids, they were absorbed and engaged. And then their parents also joined. And they were so engaged in interacting with the teachers. That was so interesting. Because most of the time, even those days, parents used to bring in their children to school, like in the urban areas but not engaged by distance how their kids have been learning or interacting with the teacher. Then the finishing I think uh, we got disconnected again. Uh, as the sound quality is not that proper, I think uh, let's go and watch uh, from a student, uh, watch a story of a student. Uh, in those days, rural areas, these children were so busy. Yeah, so they, there was a decision making process. That was community engagement uh, to me. And now the end result of this engagement was that the demand for education has been created in Bangladesh across the board. If you ask a farmer or a rickshaw puller, he or she will be telling you, okay, I would definitely like to send my kids to school. There is no, no question of no. But this demand was created because of this type of community engagement. And Brack was the pioneer in that particular one. And most of the students that time were girls because they were the ones missing an, an education. And that's why I should say, Brack showed us the way, paved the way for others to come in, and the demand for education we created across the board. Thank you so much, Appa. How beautifully you've explained that the dialogue 
that happened with parents and communities actually really motivated them and that opened up doors and opportunities for millions of girls in Bangladesh. We'll now hear from one of those girls. Uh, we'll hear uh, from Bobita Rani Dash how education really helped her and made a difference in her life. So let's go and watch the video of Bobita Rani Dash. So our first parallel car, parallel car started school take. I mean, I was born in Tarpor. Five years old, parallel car car. Parallel car car. I mean, I exam to dilam. Exam er pore halui lakha pora yeh hoyse. Halui result hoyse. Our shop party ra, our our shikok ra school er teacher. Unara amar ke onik support diye chhan. So we heard from Bobita that uh, she really enjoys going to school and how her teachers and how, how her friends actually helped her and added to her education experience. So we'd like to go to Rashid Appa again. Uh, Appa, we, uh, you know that we observed the International uh, World's Teacher Day on October 5th, so this is a right time to thank all the teachers as well. And you spoke about the importance of dialogue with uh, parents and the community. What role does teachers play in ensuring that the schools are inclusive, that uh, girls are welcome into the school and the environment is proper for them? How do you, how, what? How important is the teacher's role and what can they do to make the girls feel welcome and equal in the school environment? Going to you, Rashida. Uh, I suppose back from the very beginning, if I could give example, and also many NGOs that have formed or created followed the of BRAC in uh, you know education to so from point to BRAC in not only to the whole process engagement everything was part of and I'm extremely sorry, Appa. The connection is so poor that uh, we, we can't hear you properly. I'm requesting the technology team to check again. Uh, in the parents, the next person. In the meantime, let me go to Proful the apologies yeah. about the yeah. sound is not coming through. Uh, uh, Proful the we've seen in the video as well that BRAC organizes regular parents meeting and that plays an influential role in terms of ensuring that the children don't drop out. How important is this parents meetings? How important is this dialogue? So Proful going to you. Uh, I think you are on mute. We can't hear you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. This is again an important uh, uh, event or uh, things that uh, need uh, to ensure girls' child enrollment and retention in the school. Uh, there is a kind of things like active involvement of the parents and their attachment in the school day-to-day uh, -day operation. Uh, which make like uh, a kind of empower uh, parents and building confidence about their daughter. A series of things we uh, uh, have uh, conduct with the parents. Uh, the one of them is parents meeting. So uh, the parents meeting uh, this organized uh, in every month. And uh, there is a school management committee parents as well as our teacher as, and, and also a school supervisor present in the meeting. Uh, in this meeting, parents have opportunity to raise any kinds of question, any kinds of issues regarding school. And uh, 
uh, we we focus this meeting uh, uh, to the to the parents. Uh, so uh, there is a discussion like teacher also update their is a uh, children's attendance, uh, their learning progress, as well as uh, seeking their support, the parents support to improve uh, the learning. Uh, so uh, so it, so here parents have opportunity also to to um, decide whether uh, their school time is uh, it's 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 now in uh, morning or afternoon or noon because uh, these child also help they are in the domain in the in their household work so parents also decide these things so that uh, they are during these parents meeting uh, uh, they they can also raise issues regarding curriculum so there is another thing we do once in a year we call parents day uh, during this day, uh, parents and children like enjoy kinds of village fair. Like we organize uh, children's uh, works, what they uh, did uh, during this whole year, like their own writing, uh, rhymes, story, uh, poem, as well as their art and crafts and drawings. So we display those things in that parents' day, and there is also an exciting uh, things event, uh, the cultural show. Every children, uh, the girls are participated in this show. They perform, so parents uh, enjoy and they feel proud that their children, their daughter, uh, 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 able to sing, able to uh, dance, able to write. So those those create kind of motivation to the parents to send their children to retain their children in the school. The another uh, event we we called it is workshop, parents workshop. Uh, like uh, the parents and community uh, prepare learning materials and toys for this for their children twice in a year uh, using the local resources and, mater and raw materials. So, so again, the parents feel that they uh, prepare, they build their uh, the toys and learning materials for their children, and children also feel good that. They can avail uh, uh, to use learning materials who is made by their parents. So these, all these activities and interaction with the parents uh, in in different ways uh, make like uh, uh, parents motivated to 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 send and retain their children in our school. Thank you, Appa. Thank you, Prof. Loda. Uh, you described very well that how you work very closely with the parents to ensure them that they send their children to school. Let's now hear from one of the parents. We'll hear from Sheila Rani, who's one of the parents of uh, children who goes to the Shoghar Street Primary School on uh, the importance of the dialogue with her. So let's go to go and hear, uh, watch the video of Sheila Rani. So you have heard from uh, Sheila Rani how she feels proud to send her children to school and she's very happy about her child's progress. So uh, Rashid Appa, let me uh, come to you again and hopefully we'll have better sound right now. So uh, Rashid Appa, in terms of the ownership about the school management and Hello. how grand, My name is Vikas uh, Pota. school the management committee works, uh, what's your perspective? How important is the school management committee and how it's designed in the BRAC schools? Uh, thanks for the question because whatever Maybe the uh, structure, infrastructure of the education initiative. Immediately it comes to the management, and that is taken care of by the school committees. The school managing committee formation, it is uh, as far, I should say, government uh, guideline, but 
uh, the black schools, particularly these private initiatives, they have their autonomy to select the, as per the guidelines. Like, for example, nine members, women must be there, kids, mothers must be there, and somebody from the local community who is not associated with any, with any political party or anything, but who is really dedicated his or her life to education, that kind of personalities from the local level. The school managing committees in the system, in our mainstream system, uh, often we see that those are not, either not functioning well or not designed well. Designed well in the sense that uh, people are picked up, you know, pick and choose kind of choice made by the local elites. So kind of elite capture could happen in those schools, mainstream schools. But in black institutions, it's completely different. It is uh, the local community's choice and as per government guidelines, but community's choice, its choice, their representation is granted. And presentation of pen and paper, just sending the parties, but actively getting engaged in decision making processes. Like for example, what time? Because of time, we need to have a flexible school calendar. That is being decided by the school managing committee. What time we are going to have our sports? That is going to be decided by the school managing committee. And wh how, what kind of teacher gaps are there? How are we going to recruit and place the teachers and train them? That is also part of school managing committee's responsibility. So the best thing about all these, you know, black institution school managing committees are that the community ownership. It is owned by the people who are living there. And it's not elites, but the parents, but the local, really committed people to do the job. So it's part of the governance structure, and which is performing quite well. Thank you, Appa. Appa, we couldn't hear your response properly, so I'd like to come back to the earlier question to you about the role of teachers, because uh, Prof. Lota explained that how the teachers are selected from the local <coughs> communities, and majority, uh, almost all of them are female. How important is the role of teacher in this design? Uh, anywhere in the world, you know, any education institution, education provision, role of teachers is one of the most important ones. The governance and teachers, good governance, quality teachers. These two are integral part of a quality education system. So that's why the role of teachers are so important. They are recruited. The best part of BRAC's, uh, all these education institutions are that they are recruited transparently, transparently. And the process is so transparent. But the, again, before placing the teachers inside the classroom, all of them get some kind of training, particularly because it's not easy to, you know, be inside a classroom with primary school age children and manage them and interacting with them, particularly because Brack follows kind of interacting teaching learning process. So teachers have to be trained. So a lot of efforts for training the teachers so that they could provide the best possible teaching learning exercise to the kids. And the other point that was earlier mentioned that the other functions, like for example, it's not only just academic exercise, the sports, cultural activities, everything, everywhere, parents are involved, teachers are involved, a real community engagement framework. Thank you so much, uh, Rashid Alpha. Uh, Profundo, uh, one question to you before uh, we go to the message from T4 and open up questions to the audience. Prof. the monitoring plays a very important role because uh, what gets measures gets delivered. So how do you ensure monitoring and evaluation? How do you ensure quality of education? 
Thank you. Thank you, Appa. Uh, it uh, again, it is a uh, uh, very important for us, uh, not only us. I think uh, every education program, uh, monitoring and supervision is the crucial things. We do uh, in two ways. We call it one monitoring and other one supportive supervision. So we have independent uh, monitoring officer group. So they uh, designed uh, a monitoring tool uh, and through that they independently they do monitor monitoring uh, in input level, output level as well as outcome level. So uh, they, the automated data they share with the program management and the program supervisor take it very seriously and we do plan uh, to, to, to uh, improve those gaps. Uh, so this one kind of monitoring uh, which we take seriously. The another uh, types of monitoring uh, through our supervisor, which we call supportive supervision. So the program supervisor uh, do supervise uh, one school one or twice in a week uh, with a supervision checklist. So with this checklist, there is everything like regarding teacher, uh, delivery regarding t-shirts, uh, approach, uh, the school house environment, uh, the material, so everything uh, are there. So uh, through this supervision checklist, they supervise and they identify the gaps uh, where need improvement. So uh, through these findings, they again do a plan uh, for support uh, uh, the schools and, and they do uh, like uh, practice teaching themselves. They plan for practice teaching in the schools and also they advise the parents, also advise teachers, as well as they interact with the children. And sometimes uh, we need remedial. So those kinds of plan, this the supervisor do. And again, uh, the, for the, as a part of supportive supervision, uh, they also uh, identify the problems, some indicator uh, which we bring up in the uh, monthly refreshers courses. So there is the TSS monthly refreshers course. So through this course, those kinds of discussion happen. And again, uh, this discussion uh, discussed among teachers among themselves in a small group. And there is a kinds of things like one teacher uh, she has solution, so other teacher uh, learn from uh, from them. So this way, uh, the, 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 those kinds of problem they they, they decided the solution, and and also we have uh, uh, also community monitor. Uh, Appa already mentioned that uh, the school management committee also uh, monitors and look after the thing day to day things uh, for a smooth operation of the school. We have also one we call uh, uh, village committee. Uh, this village committee, uh, uh, when our children trans transit or transfer into uh, secondary school after graduation, we also follow up there. So this village committee uh, look after uh, uh, their retention in the secondary school, like they. Uh, prevention, they drop out, they uh, look after whether any kind of early marriage or whether they need financial support. So those kinds of things also look after by the village committee. So this way the uh, community also engaged in the monitoring process. Thank you. Papa. Thank you, Prof. Lada, for explaining the very rigorous um, quality evaluation and monitoring systems you have in place. Uh, before taking some questions from the audience, we'll now Hear a message from T4. Hello, my name is Vikas Pota. The reason why we're organizing this global showcase for World Education Week is we believe that schools have incredible expertise in making sure that learning outcomes improve. Given the state of the world, we want to see the expertise from this particular school being replicated in schools all over our planet so that the world becomes better for everyone. That is why I congratulate this school for what it does and hope that those listening can, can take away conclusions as to how they should actually approach their own improvement journeys. 
thank you all for participating and I look forward to seeing you in many of the other events this coming week. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for supporting this incredible work without whom we couldn't have put together this global showcase. Thank you and I wish you well for this event. Fast paced social, economic and technology driven change is redefining our world and having a broad range of skills such as creativity and problem solving has become far more important than being able to memorize information. To redefine how our children learn and to empower them for the future, parents, teachers and policymakers must stop overlooking a powerful part of the solution. Learning through play. Play is the rocket fuel of child development and there is a growing body of evidence to support that play is fundamental for children's positive growth and well-being over time. It is also an essential way to foster the skills required to thrive in today's world. The Lego Foundation aims to build a future in which learning through play empowers children to become creative, engaged, lifelong learners. To do so, we work with a range of partners around the world to change the hearts and minds of all of those who influence children's lives through our programmes, research and advocacy, so they can all embrace the transformative power of play. Examples of what we do include making sure that caregivers, practitioners and policymakers understand the importance of play, investigating, testing and scaling new ways to bring play-based learning into homes and schools, using play to help millions of the world's most vulnerable children cope with adverse childhood experiences and toxic stress, or conducting research with some of the world's leading research institutions. Please visit our website and follow us on social media to learn more. Language connects us all. It's how friendships are formed, ideas are shared, and lessons are learned. Language is how we find understanding and express love. It's how we communicate our successes, both big and small. It lays the groundwork for learning and growth. And for an increasingly diverse student population, it can be the key to achievement in school and beyond. That's why Rosetta Stone Education is dedicated to language and literacy. We offer solutions designed to support teachers and their emergent bilingual students, recognizing and celebrating the knowledge, culture, and languages they bring to our classrooms. Our products are founded on the adaptive blended learning model for individual needs, continuous progress monitoring, for better learning outcomes and culturally responsive pedagogies for more inclusive classrooms. With solutions aligned with proficiency standards, we support language learning while exploring academic subject areas, paving the way to better outcomes. Because for all of us, language is everything. community. We talk a lot about teachers these days, but we rarely listen to them. Therefore, I am truly excited to join the T4 World Education Week to hear from teachers and school leaders all over the world how we can impact learning together. I am particularly looking forward to the Global Showcase. 100 schools sharing their expertise and best practices, I believe, will be a huge motivation for other schools around the globe. I'm equally impressed by the T4 Solutions Challenge, its finalists and their solutions to real world issues in education. This gives me hope that we can together turn around education globally. 
The Jacobs Foundation is a proud supporter of the T4 World Education Week because we share a vision to reimagine learning and education by bringing together the brightest people who understand how children learn. Let's do this together. Thank you. Uh, we'll take some questions from our audience and I'm uh, again pleased to go to our panelists. So Profulloka, let me come to you uh, first. Uh, we've seen in the videos how important it is for children to continue their education. However, we know that uh, many due to social and economic circumstances don't get that opportunity yet. And uh, early childhood marriage is a severe problem in rural communities in Bangladesh. So through the practice, school education program and the design of the curriculum and community engagement. What do you do to prevent this? What do you do to prevent early childhood marriage? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, already we mentioned uh, there is a uh, kind of functional uh, bonding or linkage with the parents uh, with, with, with the school. So there is a kind of partnership, uh, teacher, high school and parents partnership. So everything uh, parents uh, shared with us in the parents meeting and as well as our teacher and supervisor always there is a connection, there is a communication uh, with them. So any kinds of uh, things they uh, inform like uh, uh, probability, possibility to, to uh, marry uh, any, any children. So there is a uh, school management committee, so they inform school and we then uh, uh, talked with the uh, with the parents uh, and motivate them uh, so th that that kinds of things not many happen in, in, in case of BRAC but yes when uh, these children uh, go to secondary school in that case at that time there is something happened like uh, 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 early marriage is happening but at that time, we, I also mentioned we have a village committee. So that village committee also uh, take uh, part uh, the role uh, to prevent uh, the, the early marriage. And I think I, uh, we, 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 we have to know like uh, the learning environment. If the children themselves, they enjoy the learning, parents feel like their daughter uh, uh, in in learning and they are good in uh, uh, education so parents cannot want to to uh, give uh, early marriage so that's things also need uh, not only just uh, it is a society societal thing uh, parents uh, uh, organize early marriage but there is a this kind of factor also uh, influence parents to 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 uh, organize early marriage so i think uh, uh, the need the societal mobilization uh, to, uh, to prevent the early marriage as well as need in the in the school how we organize our uh, pedagogy how we organize our school environment uh, so that uh, parents and children can motivate it uh, uh, and engaged in learning and as as you as you uh, we, we see in the video uh, there is one girl who educated uh, from this school and now uh, she is uh, in higher, higher education. So they also encourage, uh, feel encouraged, parents and children, they, they see their previous uh, elder uh, uh, are, are now in higher education and some cases they are in job. So these also motivated to prevent early marriage. Thank you so much, Prabhupada. Uh, let me come to Rashida K. Chodhri. Rashida, uh, can you hear us? I think there might be some uh, connection problem with Rashida uh, Chaudhary. Uh, Profulata, let me uh, come to you again. Uh, in terms of sending daughters to their schools, so how do they motivate the parents to send their daughters to schools? Uh, uh, there is a uh, two thing here. Uh, uh, before the school opening, uh, we organize uh, three types of meeting. Uh, in, in the community. First we call large group meetings. So in this large group meeting, we uh, a, a larger community uh, of that village uh, attend in the meeting. So there is a discussion why 
children learning needed, specifically girls education, why we, we, we need. So that those discussion uh, create a uh, platform to, to uh, for the parents to, to motivate uh, to send their children in school. Then uh, we individually meet uh, in, in a small group four or five parents. Uh, our supervisor and uh, discuss the issues uh, specifically girls education, uh, the importance. So uh, the kinds of bonding uh, developed with the with the supervisor uh, and with the parents. So the, 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 these also uh, motivate parents to send their children. And we already mentioned the classroom. Uh, how we organized and how children enjoy it in the classroom. So they feel this is their second home. Like they enjoy. They uh, even they do, uh, do not want to go any relative uh, when during school time. So that's create a mo motivation uh, uh, that the environment create them uh, this kinds of motivation to to engage in learning engage in school. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rashid Upper. Uh, let me come to you on the question of motivation. Profulada spoke about the parents' motivation in terms of community motivation. Uh, so, in the BRAC system of engagement, what have you seen? How does BRAC motivate the communities to send the girl children to school? Yeah, it's it's been. Oh, thank you for that question because this is very important to know, not only. In operating in the education system, <laughs> in trying, that I would like to uh, focus on right from the very beginning of in education has been trying to motivate parents not only to send their school but also to you know motivate them encourage them school dimensional activities like culture sports etc Brack has always waiting particularly mothers because black had my friends group all this community hope has been discussing this to like how to protect us from child and early pregnancy <laughs> how to take on like menstrual so this is the way it has been happening since the beginning of Brad's education program. Over the years, it has improved a lot, but there are also other issues. Like, for example, Brad has also been in touch or interacting with local administration, particularly education administration, who have been there and who are there, who will be there. Uh, they are the ones who are actually guiding the local education community or local education system. So that's where BRAC has also entered in interacting not only with parents, not only with communities, also with local education administration. Thank you, Rashida. But absolutely, the importance of engaging uh, local government in the process is so very important. Uh, Profulada, I'll uh, come to you with a question. How does BRAC address dropout, especially for uh, girl children? Uh, there, there are some uh, other things uh, within the classroom. Uh, how uh, girl children uh, accomplished with, like, uh, so teacher have extra attention uh, girl, uh, to girl children like during their uh, elder children, uh, the ministerial hygiene, uh, also in the uh, looking their <coughs> sanitation, and also teacher act as a psychosocial counselor. Like uh, 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 girls can 
uh, speak uh, whatever they uh, speak with their mother so they can speak also with teacher so teacher also act as a uh, uh, psychosocial counselor so these also help uh, children uh, to not to drop out and uh, the other things is like uh, uh, they see uh, like their uh, uh, classmate uh, there is a kinds of uh, social bonding like they work in a, a small group uh, as uh, also we we uh, there is inclusive education inclusive so as an inclusive education <clears throat> we also uh, uh, address the disability issue so if any child any uh, girl child uh, uh, with disability so we have a special care with them uh, accommodate in classroom as well as in the curriculum. So these uh, also helps not to drop out. And other things uh, like uh, uh, there is a uh, kind of linkage uh, with the previous group, uh, like adolescent club we have. So uh, those Thank are- Thank you so much, Prafulla. Okay. Sorry, okay. Uh, we have to close today because we have come to the end of our uh, allotted time. Uh, Rashida Coach K. Chaudhary, thank you so much for giving us time from your busy schedule. Thank you, Prafulla uh, Borman, for joining us today and giving us time. And thanks to all of you who have been listening. Uh, Prax founder, Sir Fazle Hassan Abed, believed that education is the greatest equalizer. With that commitment, we will continue our journey and thank you all of you for joining us today. Stay well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.